Hello, little one. <laughs> so, when we last left off, I forgot to save. And because I'm unprofessional, I'm going to do that now. Okay. So, when we last left off, we decided to cut Sunday in half for two different episodes. Because it was a long episode. It was 42 minutes, I do believe. And, uh, look at this. Look at this. Now we're going to hear a little bit more about Glinda and Peach's relationship, I'm guessing. And presumably we'll also talk to our team. You've always had a weak point for her antics, Linda. I'm terribly sorry, Ozpin. Of all the people to get involved in this matter, it had to be someone with a personal tie to that alumnus. We should keep the students confined to the school until this blows over, Ozpin. <laughs> I'm sadly unable to do that as of now, since I need the service of Miss Damara and Miss Ivory, since I will need the services of Miss Damara and Miss Ivory soon. While they can live with non-collaboration, outright obstacles on the path would sour our relationship. <coughs> Sorry. I didn't think the mismatched team I put together would come so close. Despite everything, Penny is as close to them as can be too. Using someone like that as a wrecking ball. That takes a level of trust. With a hint of insanity. Also, confining them out of the blue after the way they, um putting themselves in the spotlight like that would also raise questions. If we do catch them breaking the rules though, that will give us an exhaustive answer to those who would do to raise to those who it gives an exhaustive answer to those who would raise those questions. I see. Are you that confident that they will break school rules anytime soon, husband? Well, now that Miss Peach is involved, it's only a matter of time. and put on my uniform. So, why are you all over him? Because the sun he pulled was so much like something I would do. I'm so proud. Get too, Penny? Because I was feeling sad that Wilson's idea made me enjoy the battle again. I don't want to burst your bubble, but I wasn't completely in my right mind there. It was your semblance, right? Yeah, apparently I had only started discovering it. <sighs> Alright, let's focus. Point one, we finally have a direct line to this, or at least his to his interests. Which which could help us shed some light on his interest in Wilson and his guest. And speaking of shedding light, I got a question about something our little firecracker said to me. You mean Bella? Yep, she swore gear revenge on me after finding out she's got some serious competitions for my healthy man here. <laughs> Please, never call me that again. Oh, don't be such a snip, hunky. Hi, I'm sorry, did I mess up the timing? Haha, <laughs> we were just surprised, that's my partner. The gods of Penny, Penny joins Evelyn, I'm done for. Anyway, Bella swore revenge on me and a certain Belinda. Now my question is, who the hell's Belinda? <laughs> um, it's me. You're Belinda? I'm Jacqueline B. Ivory, remember? Linda's my second name. I, I figured the beast of your second name, but Melinda? It was my mother's name, my mother's mother's name, but never mind that, you know that minuscule detail you have privileged knowledge about my family. And that either means an information that worked like the Shmees, or you were, sorry, that either means information like the Shmees, or you were close to my family, which means that. <laughs> Carrots. Wow, Belinda. Her second name is Belinda. Seriously, Evelyn, don't you understand what this means? Oh no, I understand perfectly. Belinda. Oh come on, it's just a bit old-fashioned. Actually, Jack, you're the first person I have knowledge of named Belinda who hasn't passed her fifties. <laughs> That's a bit more than old-fashioned. Partner, not you two. Come on, it's not that funny. Yes, it is. You shut up. Come on, guys, this is serious. Bella may be Isabella, my sister. <laughs> Finally serious? Do you understand what this means? For years I've been naming up and nothing. Does she have a second name as well? Yes. What is it? Anselma. Oh my god, Isabella has seven irony. There's no one in the... Uh, Oh, I can't read all that text. Give me a second. Alright. 
There's no one in the Atlas and the Graph near that in 65 with that name. Can't breathe. Uh -huh. I guess it's just where I shut up and wait for you to get out of your system to side. Okay. I read all that. Also, I think I'm sweating to death. Oh well. Um. 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 What should I do today? Not train Ara. Not work at the mess hall. Can I? Yes, I can. Da 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 da. da. I wonder how wise is doing Jack or the number on him during the exhibition match. Yeah, let's go pay her a visit. I mean, the damage should have already healed, but it's just common courtesy, you know. Also, I'm pretty sure it's Monday now. Even though it never said Monday. Wilson? Hi. Hey, Ruby. I came by to see how Lice is doing. Okay, what the hell was that about? Ruby, what the hell? Hey, did I do something wrong? Is she alone? What? I can't believe that muttering. Is it Weiss? Weiss? Hello? Huh? I told you to go away. You haven't told me anything. Ruby, is that Wilson? It's no one. What do you mean it's no one? A boy has no name. Just above. It really is you, Wilson. What happened? I don't know. I just came by to ask how you were doing, and she closed the door in my face without saying anything. She- Ruby, what's wrong with you? He's the enemy. We don't fraternize with the enemy. He's not the- Oh, God. He's definitely- Ultimately, without a shadow of a doubt, five years old. Let's go talk somewhere else. God, I'm so confused. I'm so sorry you had to see that. I'm still not sure what exactly that was. A teen being a child. Let's leave it at that. Sorry, but I really can't. Why was she angry at me? She isn't angry at you. She just, uh, this is so stupid. So, you may not have, you may have noticed that Ruby holds all of us on the team in high esteem. Including herself. Particularly, and the thing is, so far, none of us ever lost a match against anything or anyone since coming to Vita. Not even against Pyrrha? Those are particularly close calls, but I can proudly sustain that we've never finished a swearing match against her with our Aura in the red. Sometimes barely. And we never won anyway. Fine. Point is, none of us ever lost this badly against anyone. So she's angry at my team for breaking your record? No, she's angry at you, because she's angry at me for not being angry. I told you, it's stupid. <laughs> right now, it's more confusing than anything else. Maybe let's go in order? Uh, do we have to? We already know she's angry at me, so let's cross that off. She's angry at me because she's angry at you? Yes, but since she tries, and since her tries of being crossed don't really work with me, she needs a proxy. You and your team. Well, except Penny. I don't think there's a soul in existence who could be angry at her. Oh, that's a given. And she's angry at you. Because she feels you should be angry, but you're not. Pretty much. Now, why does she feel like you should be angry? Well, because... Because she knows me, and logically, I should be. You may have noticed, Wilson, that I'm quite the proud individual. You are? I teeter every so often in the path a lot into the pathological levels. Grades, results, fighting, I'm not content without overachieving. And even when accepting someone as my superior, I simply see it as a temporary situation. So you're also humble. The humblest one of all. So by all accounts, I should be angry. Well, angrier. It's not like losing that doesn't bother me. But knowing me, I should be seething. Mental. But you're not. So the question is, why is that? Let's see. Well, I may not use them as an excuse, but terrain disadvantages are fresh in my life. There's also the knowledge that I may have played too much. Also, um, I can't very well go on a tangent just because I lost, and then have the gall to complain about Ruby's next ones. And finally, well, it's not really mature, is it? From the stories I've heard from the first semester, you didn't seem to care about that detail. You're right, I didn't. That's... wait, that's true. I didn't care about looking immature, even when I should have. But now I do? Is that weird? Not weird per se, but I just realized. When exactly did I... 
twice? Is everything all right? I, 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 I gotta go. I'm sorry. Was, was it something I said? I'm pretty sure we're going on the dormant right now. My only option is to go to sleep. So, no. All right, let's go in Main Street. Is there anything that looks at? No, there's not. Alley, the room's still to be added. Bookshop, shop is closed for today. Yeah, I would have had to do that earlier today. Back to Beacon. Um, I guess we'll get better at the noble art of trash talking, unless there's, um, unless there's something else for me to do. Nope. Hey, Wilson. Hey, Neon. We're ready to start. Um, I've read this a million times before. My trash talking increased by five. Well, you fight like a cow. Yep, okay. <sighs> I trust all of the chuckles have been spent. <laughs> spent enough. <sighs> Best I can hope for, I guess. So, my idea, as crazy as it sounds, may actually be true. Ella may be my younger sister. That explains why she knows my second name and how she possesses my father's lighter. Which would mean that Oz been lying about her death. What a sneak. Nah, knowing him, he may have just named my mother piercing the body and let her think it was like so. Same result. I'm sorry, Jack. Still, this doesn't explain how she survived that night. However it happened, it must have something to do with Wesser. Does it really? What do you mean, partner? It's true that Bella is now hanging out with Wesser, but if he graduated Beacon three years ago, it means that he's now 24. Jack, when your sister disappeared, he was even younger than what she is now. Shoot, it's true. Then maybe it was Howard? Maybe that's not what he really looks like. Maybe he's older. Sorry to bust that bubble, but it's not his cast, remember? Ugh, damn it, it can't be unrelated. Yeah, but maybe what ties all this together is something that we don't know about yet. Hmm, the question is just keep piling up. There's a question we can't give an answer to right now. If Bella is your sister, Jack, what should we do? I don't know. I'd like to take her back, but I don't even know if that's possible. She didn't recognize you. Or if she didn't, still attack me. I don't know what happened to her over those these years, but she's definitely not alright in the head. But she's powerful. I'm not going to risk your lives on a fool's errand. So, we just need to not make it a fool's errand. Yes, we need to make it possible, and to do that, we need information. Professor Peach can certainly help with part of it. But for the rest, we'll need to get it out of Bella herself. Hmm, you don't seem happy about happy about having to spend more time with such a cute girl. It's less the cute part that worries me, and more the unhinged part. Oh, she just wants to kill me and Jack. It's no big deal. No big deal, she says. Well, you were at odds too, but now you're friends. Maybe Bella can become our friend as well. Like we could ever be so lucky. Let's go to class. Again. Hmm. Well, drowsy throughout the whole lesson. I guess I'm still not back at 100% after the fight. Speaking of fight, I wonder how Coco and Velvet are doing. I mean, I hit them hard enough to knock myself out. I wonder what state they were left in. There he is. Talk about cute. Dude. Dude. Look at all those scars. I guess now you people have to learn that I find scars so fucking hot. Dude. I should probably read the text. Hi. Hello. Can I help you? Not directly. And what exactly are you doing? Observing you. No, really. I noticed that, but why? Also, why so blatantly? It's kind of unnerving. I don't even know you. I'm aware. It's on purpose. You're trying to unnerve me on purpose? Yes. To have a feeling of your state of mind and aura when under pressure. 
but right now, you just feel weirded out. That sums it up nicely, but seriously, who? And what exactly are you doing, Fox? Hey Coco, how are you feeling? Better than your sorry ass, that's for sure. Ask you a question, Fox. Reconnaissance on your nemesis. My what now? Her what now? He did hand you a pretty sound defeat, and you swore some pretty creative revenge on him. Okay, first of all, he did not. That's like saying a chisel creates statues. He literally got used as a bludgeoning weapon. But the idea was mine. Shut up, bludgeon. Second, I didn't swear revenge, I just vented my frustrations a little. So I should stop looking for any of the outputs you can use to shove his purse up his Yes! Also, please stop talking. I do not need that image in my head. I see. I shall put revenge on hold. Pack myself accordingly and enroll in the upper class in them. My name is Fox Wilson. I hope we can get along. I can't help but feel like I'm missing some context. Ugh, the context is that I've been fuming and seething since the match, with my team taking on the roles of unwilling recipients of my lamentations. Oh, you mean... Yeah, this was his way of nipping it in the bud and reminding me to act my age. For a blind guy, he can see better than a lot of people. Oh, so that's why his eyes. I thought he was some kind of honest. Actually, he is, but that's a story for another time. Anyway, back to acting like an upperclassman, congratulations on your victory. Oh, and I took that match lightly, and, well, the rest is history. Good job out there. Oh, um, thanks, Coco. That means a lot coming from you. Oh, enjoy it while you can, since it's going to remain a one-time occurrence. Next time we fight, I'm not losing. <clears throat> Did I just get a rival? Alrighty. Dormitory. Yang. What exactly could I do for her? She certainly doesn't need my help studying or training. <laughs> hmm. Let's think about this another way. If I can't really help her with her own things, maybe I can help other people with theirs, so that Yang doesn't have to. Taking over certain things for her would lessen... Taking over certain things for her would lessen her workload for sure. Now, how do I? You're not going to be able to, Rumi. You can go through the previous curriculum, you Ruby. Stupid Yang. Stupid skip years. Lucky. Hey, Ruby. Why the long face? This is not a long face. It's the face of defeat. Okay, but defeated you exactly? Mm, dust equations. I've tried doing on it on my own, but what a leader. You mean Professor Peach's individual paper? Yes. You know I skipped gears, right? The headmaster didn't really consider my academic knowledge when he made the offer. There's a lot of stuff I need now that I should have learned at Signal. So much to catch up on. Oof, I know the feeling. And this isn't something I can properly help her with. I mean, I have to ask the girls for help myself with a lot of stuff. I can't really tell her to go ask someone on my team. She would just go to Yang. But, unless I can use her pride against her, but that would... Wait a minute, of course. Well then, go ask Professor Peach. But, but I can't tell her that I don't know. Ruby, she's a teacher, and she loves when people want to know more about Dust. Do you honestly think that she will get angry or cross at you for needing her help, even without considering your situation? No, no, but... I bet she can even give you some material to help you catch up on more stuff. That way, you won't have to ask for her the further help, unless you get stuck again. You know what? You're right. A little admission of weakness to avoid many more in the future. Let's go find her together, then. So I can ask the same thing. Man, I can't believe I haven't thought of it yet. <sighs> Welcome back, little sis. Ready to prostrate yourself, defeat him the master, and do your duty? Never again, evil Gilower. I have broken the shackles of ignoranity. Is ignorance, you boob. Oh, and that means... <laughs> Throwing chicken scratches around won't help you, little sis. We're finishing that paper tonight. It's already finished. Yeah, yeah, I know your version of Cine. This, this is all correct. And legible? Wait, what? <laughs> the 
just above, she started copying. Hey, I did not. Ruby, um, Alcali wouldn't be happy if that's the case, but it's hard for you to accept that you did this on your own. I didn't. I just asked someone else for help. You... you asked someone else? But who? Professor Peach, of course. <laughs> you mean, the whole afternoon you... you were having a one-on-one -on -one lesson with Professor Peach? Um, two-on-one. Wilson was also there. That's not fair. How is a teacher helping a student catch up on their studies unfair? Because she's the worst student in dust class. Why can't I have one-on-one -on -one session with Professor Peach? Because you don't need it. I need you. Ah! Here's hoping she doesn't lower her grades on purpose. Yeah, that'd make Miss Peach disappointed in her. She won't do that. Good thing I didn't tell her the professor gave me her personal notes. Now I can finally catch up. Oh, that's great. I know, and I feel so silly not having thought of it earlier. Then I thought was talking with Wilson and Pop throws the idea. Honestly, I doubt any of us would have thought about it. For a reason or another, I don't think any of us had any trouble in school. Um, I wouldn't say that. I never went to professors with my problem before. I always went to Yang first. So silly. Uh, I know, right? I guess just because I've never had to doesn't mean the rest of the world is half as awesome. Hmm. Hey, Ruby, think I could take a sneak peek at the professor's notes, too? Only if you don't tell Weiss. And let's go to the amphitheater. Cool. Now we just gotta get to the weekend. Hey, Wilson. We've read this a million times. Alright. New stuff. Alright, seems like you got enough practice in a controlled environment. Meaning, meaning, it's time for the real thing. I'm not going to randomly insult people with this train. Well, let's reel them more like we're doing this out of the amphitheater. Gotta get stage fright out of you, and you get used to doing it in an active environment. Ah, I wasn't totally comfortable doing it this when it's just the two of us figures in front of other people, but I get what she's saying. Insulting people is me. Not something that comes easily to everyone. Figures insulting them properly. Which place do you have in mind then? Mm -hmm. Who said I was thinking of one place? You want us to insult each other in multiple places? It's like a video game. You beat one level to progress to the next. Um, I don't play the video game, so I'll trust you on that. Of course you can. Hit me up on a weekend when we're free and we'll do the thing. Cool. I think I'm gonna go back to making money at night. But first, you're still thinking about it. Of course, getting rid of those hussies is a very important step on our path to happiness. But if they're his teammates and friends, Big Brother would be angry with me, and I can't think of any way to make it look like an accident. Accident or not, he would still be sad, even if he wasn't angry at you. Well, if he's sad, that means I will be able to comfort him, no? Wouldn't... You prefer it if you wasn't sad to begin with? Yes, but how can I do it? It's probably impossible. His teammates are the most important people in his life, after all. That's it. Excuse me? I just need to become the most important person for him before I exterminate those huzzies. That way, he won't be sad. Hmm, I don't think... It's Big Brother. This is a sign. See, he's already thinking of me. Well, I'm just thinking of you because, hi, big brother. Y yes, of course I can talk. Hmm? This has gone too far. And it's Friday, Wednesday? Wednesday. Go to class, event still to be added. You think I like this? It's all a big waste of time. It's disgusting is what it is. The longer it goes on, the more it's going to hurt Bella. And when she does, good by chances of taking the guy alive, although considering we don't have a way of distracting the fame flame yet, maybe there's no other option anyway. You don't care about her at all, do you? 
and you do, all that you care about is that she keeps in shape. I suggest you hold your tongue, Howard, if you like your head where it is. Always violence. But Della, you're barking up the wrong tree if you want that sympathy for that little pain in the butt. I clearly am, but it's not your sympathy I wanted to appeal to. What else, then? If Bella explodes upon our refusal, it will only make our jobs even harder. Especially if she explodes in a city like Beacon. Beacon's the name of the school, not the city. If Osborne wanted to come after us, he would already have done so. And what about the Vale Police? Hmm, I guess I can try and talk to Wesser. Yes, you could. And let's go to... There's nothing else in the dormitory, I'm pretty sure. I don't want to be bothered. If I go to class, I train with Yang. I'll earn money here. I'll train Ara in the amphitheater. Jim is working out. I don't think I have anything to read. Is there anything cool for sale? Is there anything cool for sale here? I'm not reading Ninjas of Love. Um, Allie? Oh, no, no. Okay, so, um, I guess that's gonna keep on happening until we turn the photos in. Let's go train with Yang and then let's go back to our night job. Classroom. Time for the lesson, finally. Ah, the wait was. I bet she enjoyed knowing we were squirming. I couldn't begin to guess what kind of information she'd want to share with us that would be suitable for a school curriculum. Too many variables. She dangled a piece of meat in front of us and left us starving for steak for four days. I like her style. Of course you would. Here she is. Good morning, students. Happy to see there haven't been any defections yet. Not for lack of trying. Ruby. Hey, same image. I guess Miss Rose is dreading another practice session in handling dust. Oh, yes. Stop making me look bad in front of Professor Peach. How is she making you look bad? Worry not, my show on the nose main student. For today, we are going to have a special theory lesson. <gasps> really? I don't think Ruby is the one making other people look bad here. I chuckle at Team Ruby's antics and then focus on Professor Peach again. A theory lesson. She did say that Winston was interested in the myths and theories of dust more than anything else. Let me start by asking you a question, students. What did the people of Remnant pray to in the past? Um, is that a trick question? Aha! Omish Nee never ceased to give me satisfaction. But it's an actual question, students. What did the people of Remnant pray to in the past? Uh, the gods? Yes, Mr. Ark, one would think that they would pray to divine beings because that's the nature of a religion. But if you meant the same gods we worship today, sad that's sadly anachoristic. No idea what that word means. Bummer. Well then, different kinds of gods. Different regions gave rise to different worships. Very good, Miss Nikos, but let's be even more specific about it. What I want to know from you is, what do you think people in the first days of civilization worshipped? Way back before the ki four kingdoms, before machinery and settlements, even before the written word. The whole class has fallen silent, and I can't blame them. This is such a complete 180 compared to our usual lessons. A period before written word. It's hard to imagine for a lot of people. It's harder to imagine for me, because I barely know the world as it is right now. Worship. Something to pray to. It's the Earth. And then someone breaks the science, making an entire classroom of racking brains turn to the source. Oh, very, very good, Miss Fall. Care to elaborate further for your fellow students? 
She's a transfer student from Mistral, isn't she? And isn't that Emerald sitting next to her? It only makes sense. The earliest humans on Remnant worship the Earth as a mother and a protector. It makes sense. That implies there's a specific reason as to why they came to do so, doesn't it? It does, and that reason is dust. Dust? The reason why they worship the Earth is dust? Wait, Mimi. Don't you mean two reasons? Maybe I do, Mr. Wrecking Ball. There's a wreck round of laughter at my expenses. Meh, I deserve it. Um, yeah, anyways, it's also because of the grin, isn't it? Hmm, precisely. There's a few murmurs in the class, and Professor Peach is keeping her silent. It seems she's content with letting us continue debating. Um, why the Grim 2? You think the Four Kingdoms exist by the power of goodwill? Uh, no? They survive thanks to us. An ever replenishing supply of trained soldiers descended into an infinite meat grinder. Before hunters, there were armies and walls. Before that, it was just weapons. And before all of that, there's always been dust. Exactly. We don't know much about those times, but we do know that the Grim have existed at least as long as humans. And even in the earliest documented history, dust has been a part of human life. Surrounded by things nightmares are made of, they suddenly find that the Earth gives shining gems that allow them to harness the power of nature itself. Is it any wonder they came to worship it? Exactly, Miss Fall. And good on your guess as well, Mr. Decabeus. Now let me give you a shock. This is, as you said, a very archaic form of worship. Later civilizations came to bring more human-like figures, reflective on their state as humans. What if I told you that this archaic form of worship constitutes the basis for a much ridiculed theory about the very nature of dust? A theory about the nature of dust? How deep is this going? Professor, you mean the living organism theory? More new terms. Thank God Penny is here. Her memory is something else. I had a feeling you'd know about it, Miss Schneed. Your family business is one of the more vocal detractors of this theory. Well, yes, it is kind of ludicrous after all. What? What is it? What does it say? In short, it says the Remnant is alive. Wait, you mean Remnant Remnant? The planet is alive? Yes, that Remnant. I told you it's ludicrous. According to this theory, Remnant isn't just a rock floating through space that just so happens to sustain, li sustain life. And Grim, and Grim, thank you oh so much, Nora. Anyways, the theory is that Remnant is an actual living organism. Extremists of the school thought to suggest it a may even be sentient. Hmm, and what does dust constitute in this theory? Dust is Remnant's antibodies, their defense mechanism against an aggression, which explains why it stops working when leaving the atmosphere. Antibodies don't survive outside of the host body. The Grim? The Grim. And this is where it gets crazy. Crazier than a living planet? Yes. Basically, according to this theory, neither Grim nor humans are native to Remnant. Grim are an infection, a virus, while humans are, um, the equivalent of gut flora. What? Yeah, we're external beings who thrive in her body, and in return help her flourish by fighting common enemies. I don't want to be a bacteria. You're not, you dolt. As I said, it's a ludicrous theory. Proponents of it would have us cut uses of guts, dust for anything that's not defense from the Grim. Well, your family doesn't listen to logical arguments like environmental effects or labor conditions. I doubt they would listen to some kind of fairy tale anyway. Oh, shots fired. Wait just a minute. I'll have you know that. And the class degenerates into chatter, while Professor Peach wears a shit-eating grin, enjoying it all the while. As I turn in her direction, she winks. Seems like this is what she wanted to share with us. I have so many questions. That's nothing new. So this was Wester's main area of interest while they studied it. Okay. This lot theory? Oh, what a lovely acronym. Um, thanks, Ben. Anyways, the reason why Wester wants me has to do with... I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Point taken. Still, I can't help but feel a bit overwhelmed. Lesser believes this theory is true, so the question is, what the hell does he think the planet being alive has to do with me? 
Walker Dustin Walker increased by 15. That's new. Um, let's go to... Is there anything in the dorm? I don't think so. I don't want to be a bother. I don't want to train my Aura either, really. So let's train with Yang. And then let's go get some cash. Just shop. I have 155 comment XP. I think I'll do some cooking. Hmm, ran out of coffee. Thank goodness the school sells that, unlike most other stuff. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Still, how much of the stuff does Jack go through? This is like the second bag of beans this month. Well, anyway. Hello, I need a bag of coffee beans. Ah, uh, sorry kid. We just sold the last bag. You're gonna get it more in a couple days. You did? To who? That's honestly surprising. Who else could buy raw coffee beans here at the school? Then again, they already had them in stock the first time we asked, so someone had to be already buying stuff. Oh my god. I thought this was going to be unlocking character we've already met. Instead, it's going to be unlocking different character we've already met that I haven't seen as a vet yet. That girl over there. Hmm? It's Coco! Huh. Well, that's weird. I begged you more for a hot cocoa kind of gal. Hello to you too. How are you doing? Just fine. So, coffee girl? Uh, I'm just, I'm just me, boy toy. No label on this art piece. What if you really must know? I pride myself on being a cocoa master, just like my nana. And coffee is but an ingredient for one of my special brews. Ah, oh, I see. Jack uses it just for regular coffee. Jack, huh? That your leader? The girl who fought Wei Shi? Yeah. Hmm, would you say she'd be disappointed if you don't come back with some job before her? I don't like that smirk. It gives me flashbacks when she pounded me with her purse. Well, maybe just a little. I guess there's only one course of action left for you, boy toy. Go into town and buy it there. And that would be... You're going to challenge me for this bag, of course. Jack can go a few days without coffee. Okay, bye. Wait, what? Hey, what about Jack's cup of morning glory? If push comes to shove, I'll just pick them up myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> that. That was great. Oh, wait. Go back up. Oops. No, go back up. Sorry, dormitory. What the hell is up with Coco now? Hell yes. This is new, and I love it. I thought maybe I had gotten a rival. Uh, I can't say I thought of it as a joke, but wow. She actually tried to have me fight her for a bag of coffee. This is absurd. She... You actually ran out on me. She's here? What the hell, boy toy? Where's your guts from when we fought? Back in the hole we made. Are you stalking me? Nah, I was just waiting for you in a place where I knew you would eventually pass by and ambush them. Marvelous. Anyway, you're fighting me again. No, I'm not. Why? Because I'd get beaten to a paste. Aw, oh, come on, they're not that strong. Coco, a one-on-one, -on -one, no holds, hard battle, which you actually take seriously, is a no-win situation for me right now. I'd just be signing up to be your sand fan. A pretty handsome one. Not going to work, honey. Nah, just Coco. Ah! I can't decide if to be angry at her or afraid of her. Darn it! Anyway, wouldn't it be better if I made a different kind of competition instead of just a straight up fight? Hmm? I'll admit that wanting you to just straight up fight me would be unfair. Such is the life of an upperclassman. So, what about I think of something you actually have some chance of winning? An endurance contest, maybe? That could actually work. I'm listening. Not the fun type, sorry. Ah, why did I even ask? I was thinking of push-ups. 
Whoever can go the longest before crumbling wins. Hmm. That sounds easy enough, I guess. Alright, you're on. Good. Now let's talk about the wager. Huh? Aren't we doing it for the bag of coffee? That's my wager, Wilson. What are you bringing to the table to spice this up? Hmm. Good point. I mean, she paid for the bag. It's already hers. Unless I offer something else, why shouldn't we just she risk it in any kind of bet? Well, I don't know what kind of material stuff I could offer. Maybe food for food? Actually, I would like information. Information? Getting to know you better. If I win, you're mine for a game of 20 questions, boy toy. And I will have you be truthful to me. I see. Sure, I can do that. I mean, it's not lying if I'm just admitting stuff, right? Hopefully, she doesn't ask questions that are too private. Great. Hit me up when you feel ready for it. But don't keep me waiting too long, Wilson. I know where you live. Well, that's not ominous at all. And I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the gym and do nothing but work out. Also, I actually wonder about the sudden interest in this person. Did that loss really affect her that much? So. Should be loading now. Jim, we are just going to do strength training. I've never gotten this event before. I don't know what it involves. I'm not going to be doing it soon, but I am going to be doing it. Is this... Nope, it's still... Sorry. It is still Friday. This weekend, date is going to be something else. Passing over the fact that I needed to gauge both how far Bella, gone Bella is, and also if she knows anything at all about my situation, or better yet, my value as a target. There's the fact that I just realized, why is this being allowed to happen at all? After Professor Peach's lesson, I couldn't help but think, and think, and think, and think about the same things in a new light without being able to discern any new answers. And the more I thought, the more overwhelmed I became by everything. How did Major Greystone try to kidnap me at the beginning, no? If I'm really tied up in some way to, his theory, to this theory of theirs, true or false it may be, I can understand why. But the point is, why aren't they coming after me anymore? Why are they letting this charade continue? This is huge risk-taking. Then again, I guess maybe they're confident. They've been proven that no one more relevant than us is interested in them, so... Or is this some kind of psychological game? Are they looking for information as well? I don't... You should take it one step at a time. What's that? You have the face of someone whose mind is going through a number of things all at the same time. It does in no way help. She is a transfer student from yesterday, but I thought they slept in another dormitory. Am I that easily read? At the moment, but I pride myself at being quite literate. I see. I don't think we've ever properly introduced ourselves. You may have heard the professor refer to me as Miss Fall, but my first name is Cinder. Cinder Fall. My name is Wilson. Decabicus. Yes, I remembered from last Sunday. You left quite an impact on the people around you, starting with those two second ears. I can't help but laugh at myself, feeling my cheeks flush. It might be because she's gorgeous, but she's making me feel quite self-conscious. You've also piqued the interest of my teammate, which is a bonus. If you had already done a favor for Emerald, this, Emerald's first event, this would be a different line. Emerald, right? Yeah, she offered a collaboration. Are you waiting for me to ask you what you're doing here? I am. And you can't just tell me because... Because there's a world of difference between being able to do something and actually wanting to. Headmaster Hoskin is a prime example of that, would you agree? Yeah, so you're not his fans either, like Emerald implied. Something like that, and I doubt we're the only ones. Professor Peach, Jack, and Evelyn, if we get his information about his sister, if we get information about her sister from the former, why, this seems like a pretty obvious typo. They're talking about Jack, right? Whatever. Could Penny ever be cross with someone? She doesn't strike me as the type. Because he wouldn't help you, you were forced to strike a deal with our common multi-haired acquaintance. And Emerald offered me more competent help. Are you also offering? I could be, if it's in my interest. Doesn't mince words at all. Fair enough. The real question is, what kind of help do you need, Wilson? 
right now. I need information more than anything else. <clears throat> so you'd want us to acquire that information for you. Right now, I don't really want you to do anything. Ooh, she's insulted. Excuse me? As you said before, I don't know if it'd be in my interests. First of all, I don't even know if you'd be able to find this information for me. Second, just asking you to try would expose me. And finally, I don't know enough about you to decide if I want to be indebted to you. Well, you could be indebted to Emerald. Well, let's just say that our first encounter left to let us realize a few things about each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, this is actually better. Mm -hmm. Very well then, I guess we will have to get to know each other. Sounds like a plan. Shall we shake on it? She extends her right arm in my direction. Slender, markless, beautiful alabaster skin, perfect fingers, and fingerless gloves. Absolutely. I extend my own right arm in her direction, moving the grass on her offered hand. What the fuck? I hold my right hand, staring at it, checking for birds, but there's nothing. Yet, when I touched her, it... It was like I was suddenly holding my hand over an open fire. And that vision, I... What even was that? Are you alright? Yes, I'm sorry. I, I thought I saw a bat. A bat? Yes, there are a few enforced nearby. And sometimes one leaves the window open and... Just the sight of a bat causes this reaction. Yeah, ever since I faced an apple on my own. <laughs> an apple alone, and you survive? Do I look like I'm lying? Of course, I'm not saying that the apple was actually a transport of Faunus, but... Not at the moment. Well, I guess we should go before they turn off the lights for the night. Yeah, sorry again. You're forgiven, but I will remember this. I can breathe again. What the hell was that about? And just who was that woman? I felt, it felt like I was on fire for a moment, and... Wait. Fire. <laughs> ba -dum, bum, bum. Should be Saturday now, correct? Yes. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all had fun. Next time we'll do something involving... Weiss, or Ruby, or... Yang. Hmm. I'll have to try and remember the order in which certain things and that's happening so that I can make the proper decisions in what order I want to do their events in. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day!